The view from atop Cedar Mesa in southeastern Utah. Below stretches America's newest national park called Bears Ears. It's almost as big as Prince Edward Island. Five and a half thousand square kilometers of canyons, mesas, and reddish beige desert. Barack Obama created Bears Ears as one of his last acts as president, but long before the park was officially born at the end of last year, many in the state were already trying to kill it. Nicole Holliday comes from a ranching family in a nearby town called Blanding. She fought against the park. So did Utah's Republican government, upset the area would be cut off from development and oil and gas extraction. For one man to strike his pen and take over a million acres, like, holy cow. But there is a whole other view of this land, an older view. There's wild onions out here, we can't find any. Every week or so, Jonah Yellowman comes to Bear's Ears to collect medicinal herbs, but he always finds more than just the sage he's looking for. Right here. Bits of pottery and tools, he says, from the indigenous people who lived here many generations ago. It's all over the place around here. So be careful where you step sometimes. Bears Ears has thousands of ancient burial grounds, cultural sites, and rock art that go back millennia. It's something that we're trying to preserve, you know. It's spiritual, it's uh, our ancestors. They're still here. To see exactly why this land needs federal protection, I clamber along a steep cliff trail with Navajo elder Mark Maryboy. He helped unite five indigenous tribes to submit a proposal for this park. He takes me to one of the most spectacular ancient petroglyphs known as the Wolfman Panel. So all of those holes there, those are bullet holes? Those are bullet holes uh, made by a high part rifle. There's uh, over 100,000 sites and many of those locations you see the similar bullet holes. Other cultural sites have been looted, even hacked off with power saws. Now local tribes get a say in how Bears Ears is managed, and that's one of the reasons some Utahns are so dead set against the park. They're gonna start restricting it, restricting access, restricting the freedoms that we already enjoy up there. And it's not the first time, he says. About 20 years ago, Utah legislators tried to get rid of another new national monument, one created by President Clinton. That effort didn't go anywhere, but this time around, they have a friendly ear in the White House. President Trump has now ordered a review of all the biggest monuments created in the last 30 years, starting with Bears Ears. But getting rid of it won't be easy. Obama used something called the Antiquities Act to create the parks. The law from 1906 gives presidents the power to create protected areas, but not undo them. If Trump can't get rid of Bears Ears, Utah's Republican lawmakers have suggested he shrink it or simply stop funding it. Environmentalists say if that happens, they're ready to defend Bears Ears in court. An attack on one national park makes all of them vulnerable. All citizens of the United States have a stake and vested interest in protecting these areas. Back with Yellow Man, we come across more traces of his roots. <laughs> That's a Hogan. I, I was raised in one of those. Yellowman says this one was built before white settlers came. His people lost this land once already, he says. He can't help but feel like it could happen again. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, near Bears Ears Monument, Utah.